We on. Gio, back up in this motherfucker once again, man. Uh, pay-per-view boxing E, you know what I'm talking about? The day before the Terrence Crawford versus Amir Khan fight, so we just going to uh, do a little something, something. Got some little trivia. Talk about the fights that's coming up, the, uh, the young little prospects. Uh, break down Sam Langford. You know what I'm saying? We supposed to have been and done this shit a while ago, so that's on me. But it's going down today, though. First place in the trivia tournament going to be 50 bucks. Second place, 25 bucks. how we do. You know what I'm saying? So get some people up in this motherfucker and it's going down. Once again. Got El so, Nietzsche on the panel. He said he ain't ducking no trivia today. I ain't ducking this fade. I ain't ducking this fade. <laughs> All right, man. So you gonna participate, bro? Bro, I'm gonna t- participate to the best of my knowledge, and I'm gonna try to go get this fifty. Fuck it, go get that motherfucking fifty, then, man. Don't yeah. Be scared to go to Google. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Let me see if I can work this bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put you on team one, man. To go ahead and get it started. You know what I'm saying? God damn, man. <clears throat> go ahead and uh. Get it cracking this motherfucker. Winston Lee stepped up in the building, man. We're doing trivia, bro. What's up with it, man? You going to uh, get in on the trivia? Going to do a little trivia tournament tonight. I pro- I was supposed to be uh, getting all the uh, the big the big wigs to come through this motherfucker and do it, but I ain't get on that shit like I was supposed to. So, And plus, I was thinking, man, uh, maybe we'll give like you know somebody else a chance to win that motherfucker because everybody already be automatically assuming that uh, Lawrence Williams going to win every single time, you know what I'm saying? So give some other people to, uh, to participate. Not seeing a dream, what's up with it? Say, Trace, I, uh, I know I am dead. Haven't been studying at all, but I am in this joint. I ate you in the tournament. All right, that's what's up. I'm going to put you on. Uh, uh, Winston Lisa, I'm in and out, caking with the lady. All right, all right, getting the cake on, a.k.a. he ducking his trivia, ducking that smoke. So team one, I got El Fenichi, and, and on team two, I got not seen the dream. You know what I'm saying? I guess I'll let some people come in first, man, because I was uh really trying to look at this uh this uh Sam Langford and all that shit. Got Sir Hussein, what's up with it, man? We're what's doing good, this trivia man? tournament today, man. I'm gonna put you on up. Uh, he said he a spectator. He come in ducking. Why y'all gotta be scared of uh, uh, the trivia, man? I got some. I ain't going way back in time today. I'm going like to the '80s and the '90s, like Sugar Ray Leonard type shit. I'm talking about Terrence Crawford, Amir Khan. You know what I'm saying? The fights this weekend, shit like that. It ain't. It, it ain't nothing too difficult. Damon P. What's up with him? Vamos Campeon, the lady of the hour, too sweet to be sour. God bless the queen. You know what I'm saying? Damon P. Said, unfortunately at work, can't stay, but wanted to say what's up and hit the like button. Be back at lunch. All right, that's what's up, bro. I can't even see your emoji, uh, Yasser Hussein. What he said he was going to do? Yeah, he said he a spectator. So I seen the dream say, shit, well, I'm good. Let's get it. All right, that's what's up. Yeah, I got you on team, too. And I seen the dream. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing too uh too difficult, like I said, man. I, um, normally, like, I be going way back in time to the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, and all that kind of shit. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to uh, do something a little bit more uh, up to date. You know what I'm saying? I might have to fuck around and get off my damn phone and get on my damn tablet because my shit about to go dead. I got it on the charger and that shit ain't helping. Uh, La La D, I know you're going to play. I'm going to put you on team one. You with El Fenichi. The alien said, butter bean pound for pound. Yeah, that's a bunch of goddamn pounds here. Uh, Dog Summer for, uh, said, yo, big babe, pop three times. Y'all start that shit. You want to get in on the trivia? If you're on the trivia, I'll put you on team two, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I saw that shit with Big Baby, man. That shit explained a lot. That's a big man to be uh, moving around like that with that kind of stamina and shit. So it ain't too surprising that he was on some type of uh, performance enhancing drug. All right, La La D says she ain't playing. God damn, why everybody talking the trivia today? Chris Rayner, I know El Chapo going to play. Chris Rayner, I'm going to put you on team one. El Chapo, God damn. Everybody ducking the damn trivia. Even La La D duck, ducking the trivia. She a champion in this motherfucker. Uh, damn, man. So I guess I'll go ahead and just, uh, we'll look at that, uh, Sam Langford until, you know what I'm saying, more people come through or whatever. I've been meaning to do this shit. I'm doing this, uh, out of respect for my man, uh, Scrapbook Boxing. 
You know what I'm saying? We're gonna start breaking down fighters. And I and, and I said we're gonna start with his top 10 pound for pound fighters, scrapbook boxing. You know what I'm saying? So his favorite fighter of all time is Sam Langford. Last time we did his number two favorite fighter, and that was Harry Grail. So Sam Langford, he was 178, 29, and 39, according to Box Red. He stood five foot seven and a half, had a 74-inch reach. He was uh, called the Boston Tar Baby. Fought from 1902 to 1926. That's 24 years. Competed from lightweight to heavyweight. Orthodox, but could switch. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't just uh, Terrence Crawford that could switch. That boy Sam Lake uh, could too. He was born in Nova Scotia, Canada. Many boxing historians consider Langford to be one of the greatest fighters of all time. Scrapbook Boxing, our man, considers Langford to be the number one ranked fighter of all time. He fought from lightweight to heavyweight and defeated many world champions and boxing legends in each weight class. Langford was a devastating puncher, even at heavyweight. He was rated number two by the ring on the list of 100 greatest punchers of all time. One boxing historian described Langford as experienced as a heavyweight James Tony with the punching power of Mike Tyson. He was denied a shot at many world championships due to the color bar and the refusal of heavyweight champion Jack Johnson to fight him for the belt. He was, like I said before, he was born in Nova Scotia. Langford left home as a youth to escape an abusive father. He made his way to Boston where eventually he found janitorial work in a boxing gymnasium at the Lennox Athletic Club. Before long, he was honing his own boxing skills. He won the amateur featherweight championship of Boston at 15 years old. Langford's most memorable fights were his fights against fellow black boxers, Sam McVeigh, battling Jim Johnson, Joe Jeanette, and, and Harry Wills, who all uh, experienced color barriers. Langford defeated world lightweight champion Joe Gans on December the 8th, 1903, by 15-round decision. Gaines' title was not on the line, however. The two would later become good friends. Langford considered Gaines, I mean, Joe Gaines the pound-for-pound pound greatest fighter of all time. He fought Jack Blackburn, trainer of Joe Lewis, six times, going 103 with two uh, no contests. In 1904, Langford scored a 15-round draw against Barbados Joe Walcott at welterweight. BoxRec has the fight as both a title and a non-title fight. So, like, when you look at the, the, the spreadsheet, like uh, Blood be saying, you'll see it was a, it say for the welterweight title. But if you actually do the reading and shit, like when you hit them three lines, it'll say that it was not for the title. You know what I'm saying? So it say both of them on that motherfucker. Many believe Langford whooped his ass. In 1912, Langford beat uh, Sam McVeigh for the color heavyweight championship. Langford fought various contenders throughout his career. He fought young Peter Jackson six times, going four, one, and one. Their bout on November the 12th, 1907, was for the world color middleweight championship. Langford won a 20-round decision. Langford fought heavyweight Joe Jeanette 14 times, going 8-2-4 and four by my count. On, on April the 26th, 1906, Langford lost a 15-round decision to Jack Johnson. Many spectators felt Langford had won the bout, despite being knocked down in the sixth round. After winning their first match, Johnson repeatedly refused rematches against Langford. Langford fought heavyweight fireman Jim Flynn six times, going five and one. On April the 27, 1910, he fought against Stanley Ketchell. Ketchell had vacated the belt only eight months ago. Langford won a hard fight. A longer rematch was rumored but never happened due to Ketchell's murder six months later. Langford fought heavyweight battling Jim Johnson 12 times, going 9-0-3. Johnson was always heavier than Johnson by 26 to 40 pounds. Langford fought heavyweight Sam McVeigh 15 times, going 6-2-7. and seven. On August 15, 1920, I mean 1911, Langford defeated former world light heavyweight champion Philadelphia jumping Jack O'Brien by fifth round technical knockout. O'Brien later said to Langford, when he appeared upon the scene of combat, you knew you were cooked. Goddamn, you knew that was your ass. Langford fought heavyweight Gumboat Smith twice losing the first by decision and winning the second by third round knockout. Langford fought heavyweight Harry Wills 17 times. Langford was 31 in the first bout and continued to suffer from old age and fell in eyesight more and more each fight. 
He went 2-13-2 and two against Wills. Langford won the World Colored Heavyweight Championship a record five times. Later in his career, on uh, June the 5th, 1922, Langford knocked out uh, – hold on. He knocked out oh, – I don't I fucked up. Hold on. All right, he knocked out Tiger Flowers and only – hold on, I'm tripping. Hold on. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm right, I'm tripping. Later in his career, on June the 5th, 1922, Langford knocked out uh, Tiger Flowers in, in the second round. Langford was mostly blind, and Flowers would go on to win the World Middleweight Championship. In 1923, Langford won boxing's last fight to the finish to win the Mexican Heavyweight Championship. His last fight was in 1926 when his failing eyesight forced him to retire. He was completely blind and still and still was ducked in his career. You know what I'm saying? So that's a little bit on Sam Langford, man. You know, we be hearing about these fighters, but we don't be knowing nothing about them. Can't even name nobody. They done fought or none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that's so we don't be looking like no goddamn fools and shit. Hey, uh, I see my man Bad Bart up in the building, man. What's up, man? We doing some trivia today. So I'm going to put y'all on teams, man. Dalton, uh, yeah, I saw that shit already. He ain't say if he want to play or not, so I guess he ain't in. The alien, I'm gonna put you on team too, man. We're gonna do this little old uh trivia today, man. First place is 50 bucks, second place is uh 25. Bad Bart, I'm gonna put you on team one, man. If you still up in there, Sierra F, what's up with you? I don't know if you uh in the boxing like that, but if you are, let me know and I'll put you in. Yeah, Sarah Hussein said 15 round decision. Damn, them days must have been brutal. Yeah, 20 round decision for the uh, I can't even remember who the fuck that was. Uh against um young Peter Jackson. That was 15 uh, uh, uh 20 rounds. All right, bad bar said, cool, I'm down. Don't know how much help I'll be. I right, say the, the field ain't that tough today. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna be all right. Yeah, Sarah Hussein, man. I'm gonna put you on team too, bro. I don't even remember what you said. My man Mark Wonderlick up in the building. I'll put him on team too, because I don't know what y'all Sir Hussein want to do. I know my man Mark Wonderlick will give me some play. ADA Sports Talk, what's up with it, man? I'm going to put you on team one, bro. We on this trivia. See, if y'all want to win, y'all won. This the day to win it. Goddamn, because y'all ain't got no uh, 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 Lawrence Williams or none of that shit off in here. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm about to uh, go on ahead and get to the little old trivia. All right, check this out. This is the first question. And y'all be free to go to Google, man, if you need to. You know what I'm saying? Okay, number one. What fighter was known as the Black Mamba and won the WBA Super Featherweight Championship by defeating Samuel Serrano by an eighth-round knockout? Big Snack Pack, what's up with it, man? You want to get on the trivia? I'll put you on team two, man. Nitty G, what's up with it? We're on this turn. We're on this trivia. We'll put you on team one. Put big snack pack on team two. Nitty G, I got you on team one. That'll be Roger Mayweather. That's Winston Lee. You got that one. Hold on real quick. So that's Nitty G on team one. All right, Teddy B. Smooth Teddy B. What's up with it, man? Bobby Jean, what's going down? All right, Bobby Jean, I'm going to put you uh, Tone Bangers. What's up, bro? All right, Tone Bangers, I'm going to put you on team two. Appreciate that super chat, bro. T uh, smooth Teddy B. So, all right, Tone Bangers, I got him on team two. Bobby Jean, I'll put you on team one. And then my man Teddy B, I'm going to put you on team two. That is Roger Mayweather. That's the answer. Okay, so who got that shit first? Let me get into the game. All right, Winston Lee. Winston Lee got that one first. Hold on, where he at? All right, damn, did I say? I said Winston Lee wasn't going to. I done fucked up, man, because I ain't put Winston Lee on the team because he said that he wasn't going to play at first. I done fucked up. So who the second person, man, that got this shit? I'm going to tighten up, y'all. Bad Bart. I'm going to have to give it to Bad Bart because I ain't have Winston Lee on the team yet, man. I hate to fuck you at your point like that, bro. But I got confused in this motherfucker. I'm going to give. I'm gonna put you on team one, though. My bad about that, man. God damn. All right, let me get up in this motherfucker now. All right, check this out. Next question. What great fighter has a record of 31, 4, and 2 in world title fights? Fought a draw with Pernell Whitaker and has losses versus Oscar De La Hoya and Kai Suzu. Yeah, man, I fucked my man up at this point, man. Marcus Johnson, what's up, man? I'm going to put you off in on team two.
Once again, what great fighter has a record of 31, 4, and 2 in world title fights? Fought a draw with Pernell Whitaker and has losses versus Oscar De La Hoya and Kasazu. Nassim said, uh, Nassim got the, all right, I see the answer, uh, that'll be Teddy Beatty. That'll be, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. That's the first person I see it with. So, smooth Teddy B. Where he at? He on team two. So, that'll be Julio Cesar Chavez on that one. All right, next question. What was Pernell Whitaker's amateur record? Y'all might have to go to Google for that one. I still feel fucked up. I had to take my man point like that, man. I wish I could figure out a way how to how to rectify that. I just got confused because I didn't know if he wanted to play or not. Once again, what was Pernell Whitaker's amateur record? I see all y'all down there with y'all Chavez's and shit. My man Smooth said the beat say 96 and 5. It's a little bit better than that, actually. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot more fights than that. Robert Trim said, who do you think AJ should fight, man? I think AJ needs to come do some trivia tonight, goddamn. We're doing a trivia tournament. But if you want to play, man, let me know. If you want to play, I'll put you on the team. All right, Chris Rayner, uh, he close. That ain't what I saw, though. You close, though. Real close. Real close, goddamn. Keep going. You know how you do. <laughs> Y'all going to go to Google. I guess that's where they going to, goddamn. First person back from Google with it. Bad Bart got it. That'll be 201 and 14. So that's another one for Bad Bart. That's two for Bad Bart. So far, hold on. Let me keep uh, score the, uh, track of the, sco uh, the score a little better. So that's two points for team one, one point for team two. All right, we on question number three. What fighter did Zab uh, – hold on. Hold on. Man, I done fucked up. Oh, I'm going to have to come back to that one. I'm going to come back to that one right there. All right. Who promoted Amir Khan from 2010 to 2014? Yeah, I see you down there with the nitty G. Bad Bart got that shit first. Who promoted Amir Khan from 2010 to 2014? That's why I told you I ain't go just way back in time with it, man. I did some shit that's doable. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Chris Rayner got that one. El Chapo got that. That'll be Golden Boy. So that's another. That's one for Chris Rayner, and that'll be three points for Team One. Okay, who won Ring Fighter of the Year in 1995 and holds an amateur record of 223 and five? Once again, who won Ring Fighter of the Year in 1995? And holds an amateur record of 223 and 5. Once again, who won Ring Fighter of the Year in 1995 and holds an amateur record of, of 223 and 5? I don't see it yet. Winston Lee said Holyfield, I don't see it. All right, Big Snack Pack got it. That'll be Oscar De La Hoya, goddamn golden spatula. So there's one for Big Snack Pack. Where he at? Big Snack Pack. He on team two. So that's two. It's three to two in favor of team one so far. So that's Oscar. Next, next question. What fighter had an amateur record of 51 and 6 and defeated Maurice Blocker for the IBF welterweight crown? Neutral natural, that's games PP shit. He know this shit, this uh trivia shit. I'm putting him on team one. Once again, what fighter had an amateur record of 51 and 6 and defeated Maurice Blocker uh for the IBF welterweight crown? Okay, I'm seeing Roy Jones and all that. Hold on. Oh, that mu that must have been for the previous question. Once again, what fighter had an amateur record of 51 and 6 and defeated Maurice Blocker for the IBF welterweight crown? Neutral Natural Simon Brown, La La D, yeah, that's that's Games PP, Buddy McGirt, David the Real Thomas. I'll put you on team two. I don't see it. He said uh he got it. What'd he get? Because I don't see the answer yet. Terry Norris, all right, Chris Rayner got it. I think, yeah, that's the first person with Felix Trinidad. I don't see nobody with Trinidad. Yeah, that's the first person with Trinidad. That'll be El Chapo. 
Chris Reiner. That's two for Chris Reiner. That's another point for Team One. That'll be four points for Team One. So that's Felix Trinidad. Next question. What fighter was 52 and 2 as an amateur and fought Vito Antifermo for the Undisputed World Championship on November the 30th, 1979? Once again, what fighter was 52 and 2 as an amateur and fought Vito Antifermo for the Undisputed World Middleweight Championship on November the 30th, 1979? And if I could, get, I, I ain't gonna give a hint just yet. Well, I give a little hint. It was a, uh, it was a draw. The fight was a draw. Te Smooth Teddy B say Carlos Monzon, no sir. What? Okay, there we go. El Chapo back with another one. That'll be uh Hagler. Not seeing the dream right behind him. I see El Chapo first with it. So that's three points for him. That's five points for Team One. Y'all see you down the Rod Sportsman Lee. I'm gonna put you on Team One. That's going to El Chapo, though. Okay. Uh, all right, next question. What fighter was 145 and 5 as an amateur and won the Ring Fighter of the Year in both 1979 and 1981? Once again, what fighter was 145 and 5 as an amateur and won the Ring Fighter of the Year in 1979 and 1981. Smooth Teddy B said he should have went with his first mind. Yeah, man, he studied long, he studied wrong sometimes, man. Okay, once again, what fighter was 145 and 5 as an amateur and won the Ring Fighter of the Year in, in both 1979 and 1981? Okay, let me make sure. All right, Bad Bart, that'll be Sugar Ray Leonard. So Bad Bart, that's three for him. That'll be six points for Team One. It's, it's six to two in favor of team one. Okay, next question. Hold on. Okay, next question. What fighter was disqualified in his light heavyweight semifinal bout with Kevin Barry of New Zealand for hitting after the break at the 1984 Olympics? Once again, what fighter was disqualified in his light heavyweight semifinal bout with, Ke with Kevin Barry of New Zealand for hitting after the break at the 1984 Olympics. Bontan South D-Town, what's up with it? I'm going to put you on team two, man. I don't see the answer yet. Okay, yeah, I do. That'll be not seeing the dream. He got it. That'll be Evander Holyfield. Oh, man, not seeing the dream, man. He on team two. So that's one for him. That'll be three. It's three to six in favor of team one. Man, the Holyfield. Next question. Who is the opponent believed to have thumbed Harry Grebb in his eye in their 1921 bout, which led to Grebb going blind? And, uh, you know, we, break, we broke down Harry Grebb last time, so that's why I threw that off in there, you know what I'm saying? So that favored the people that was here. Once again, who, uh, who is the opponent believed to have thumbed Harry Grebb in his, in his eye in their 1921 bout which led to Greb going blind. And you got the real Holyfield. Underrated, what's up with it, man? You want to play, man? I'll put you on team one. Underrated darkness. Bonton said, I'm just listening and enjoying the show. All right, it's all good. I got you rolled in already. Well, I guess now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take you off and then put uh, Underrated on team two then. That's what I'm going to do. I'm put underrated over here. Okay, I, uh, Bad Bart, I see the answer. That'll be another one for Bad Bart. That'll be Kid Norfolk. So that's four points for him. That'll be seven points for Team 1 and three points for Team 2. That's Kid Norfolk. Next question. How did Harry Grebb secure a fight with Johnny Wilson? Once again, how did Harry Grebb secure a fight with Johnny Wilson? And to give a little uh, backdrop, um, Johnny Wilson's uh, manager did not want him to fight Harry Grebb. So what did Harry Grebb do to secure a fight with Johnny Wilson? Once again, how did Harry Grebb secure a fight with Johnny Wilson? 
I don't think I see. Once again, how did Harry Graff secure a fight with Johnny Wilson? And I believe that was for the middleweight championship. I see by the mob. Marlo say raise his pay. You want to get in too, bro? You want to put you on the team? <laughs> I don't go over these questions with Marlo. Now I seen the dream say by the uh the mob, Chris Rayner beat Tommy Lochran, uh Rod Sportsman Lee pretending to be drunk. That's one for Rod Sportsman Lee. That'll make eight points for team one, eight to three in favor of team one. Yep, he faked being drunk in public. You know what I'm saying? He put on these big uh public displays of drunkenness. All right, next question. Who ran up on Harry Grebb at the club after they 1925 bout? He ran up on Harry Grebb and said the motherfucker was cheating in they fight, and that's the only reason they won. You know what I'm saying? He, and he ended up knocking Harry Grebb out, too, because he got to talking shit, and Harry Grebb jumped up and uh got his ass knocked out fucking around with this dude. So once again, who ran up on Harry Grebb at the club after they 1925 bout and I should add, he knocked Harry Grail's ass out at the club. <laughs> All right, neutral natural. That's my man, Gaines PP. That's one for him. That'll be nine points for team one. It's nine to three in favor of team one. And that is uh, Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker ran up on him and knocked him out. Okay, what was Harry Grail's record versus Hall of Famers? He had 48 fights versus Hall of Famers. So what was his record in those fights? I see you down there, Bad Bart. Underrated. All right, once again. Where the fuck I was at? Oh, all right. What was Harry Graves' record versus Hall of Famers? Like I said, he had 48 fights. What was his record in those fights? Nitty G say, salute to the corner, salute to the block fam, salute to the mighty LDBC about to start my shift at work. If the stream's still going, when I go on break, I'll hop back on. All right, that's what's up, bro. Goddamn. Chris Rayner, El Chapo, that'll be 33, 9, and 6. We're El Chapo, and that's four points for him. So uh, that'll be, hold on, that's four, eight. So that's 10 points. That'll be 10 points for team one. So it's 10 to 3 in favor of team one. Okay, next question. What was Terrence Crawford's amateur record? Once again, what was Terrence Crawford's amateur record? Bad boy, yeah, good work, El yeah, Chapo, goddamn. Once again, what was Terrence Crawford's amateur record? Y'all know I'm big on that on that amateur shit. That's why I'm always asking them questions. You know what I'm saying? That's the foundation for a fighter. What was Terrence Crawford's amateur record? I'm seeing. 60 and 12, that's close. That's close. That's real close. That's real close. 60 and 12. What was Terrence Crawford's amateur record? Bad Bart, 58 and 12. So that's another one for Bad Bart. That make five points for him. That's 11 points for team one. It's 11 to three in favor of team one. That'll be 58 and 12. Hell uh, yeah. what, what is Terrence Crawford's professional record? Once again, what is Terrence Crawford's professional record? 40, that should be an easy one. 40 and 0. You say 40 and 0. That's close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're in the ballpark. Once again, what is Terrence Crawford's professional record? Okay, neutral natural. That'll be 34 and 0. Okay, where, where my man at? That, uh, neutral natural. That's two for him. That's 12 for team one. So 12 to three in favor of team one. That's 34 and 0. How many knockouts does uh, Crawford have? How many knockouts does Terrence Crawford have on his record, on his resume? In case you didn't hear it again, how many knockouts does Terrence Crawford have? 24. You can't say you can't do it like that because you can hear me, so you can hear uh me before they do. So if you participate, you got to do it off in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that shit. Fuck. How am I going to win? Colbert, man. What's up, man? I'll put you on team one. And where is the answer? That'll be 88 Sports Talk. That's 25. What my man 88 Sports Talk? That's one for him. That's It's 13 to three in favor of team one. That's, so that's 25 knockouts. I'm, I'm jumping in here and there. 
All right, I'm gonna put you on team two then, bro. Trey, huh? How I'm supposed to win if I can't have an advantage, bro? Fuck. Man, I know advantage, man. We gotta do it fair, bro. Gotta do it fair, man. Next question: Who was the last undisputed champion at 140 before Crawford unified the division in 2017? I'm IGM Ruiz. What's up, man? Welcome to the gym. I'm gonna put you on uh, team one. I'm just gonna put I'm Ruiz. Hey, That's say that again. Uh, Robert Trims. I don't think Josh. All right, I said Josh Colbert. Do I got Robert Trims already? I don't think I do. I'm gonna put you on team two. Robert Trims. Once again, who was the last undisputed champion at 140 before Crawford unified the division in 2017? I see Pacquiao, Mayweather, uh, and Dongo. No sirs. Once again, all right, I see it. That'll be smooth, Teddy B. That's Casa Zoo. So where Teddy B at? Uh, that's two for him. That's four for team two. So it's four to 13, team two. I saw somebody in the same fight. I'm going to put you on team one. Got you on team one. All right, next question. There have only been six fighters to simultaneously hold all four major world titles. Those fighters have been Jermaine Taylor, Bernard Hopkins, Cecilia Brakis, Alexander Usyk, Terrence Crawford, and what other fighter? So what's the fighter that I'm that I'm uh that I'm missing? I'm I'm Ruiz. Yeah, you on team one. Yeah, you team one. Make sure I ain't got you on there twice. All right, once again, there have only been six fighters to simultaneously hold all four major world titles. Those fighters are Jermaine Taylor, Bernard Hopkins, Cecilia Brakis, Alexander Usyk, Terrence Crawford, and what other fighter? All right, that'll be Marlowe's corner. <laughs> Carissa Shields. That shit. I got, I Wait got a minute, bro. on team two. That's a fur. Huh? That's unfair advantage, bro. That nigga answered in the chat. How is unfair? Because, bro, he was already he he was already going for Carissa Shields, bro. He man, loved her, bro. Got shit to do with it, man. No, nah, bro, fuck that. You can't keep that keep that from that uh that man from his points, bro. Well, I'm trying, bro. <laughs> All right, so that's one for Marlo. Five points for Team Two. Says so thirteen to five in favor of Team One. Next question. Hold on. Where does Terrence Crawford rank pound for pound? According to the ring, the transitional boxing rankings, board, and bo uh, box rec and ESPN. I said that all fucked up. Hold on, let me let me back that up. <laughs> Where does Terrence Crawford rank pound for pound according to the ring, the transitional boxing rankings board, box rec and ESPN? Okay, Robert Trims, Tims. Oh, oh shit, what's up with it, man? I'm gonna put you on team two. Oh shit, it's oh shit, goddamn. Robert Tim's got that. What team I got him on? I gotta find him, gotta find him. I don't see where the motherfucker is. No, that, no, I that, got that, him uh, on team two. He on team uh, excuse two. me. Excuse me. No, that's me. I was before him, my good man. Nah, he right above you, my good man, on mine. So I gotta I gotta go with what I see on mine, bro. <laughs> All right, look. Okay. Who was no, Crawford's no, no. You got the he beat you, bro. Like, listen, who was Terrence Crawford's first notable opponent in his 20th fight on the Brandon Rios versus Mike Alvarado undercard? Once again, who was Terrence Crawford's first notable opponent in his 20th fight on the Brandon Rios versus Mike Alvarado undercard? Okay, I'm seeing smooth Teddy B. That'll be Bradis Prescott. Where's Smooth Teddy B at? My damn handwriting went so sloppy. I can find a motherfucker easy. All right, that'll be 7 to 13 in favor of Team 1. So how many Teddy B? That's 3 for Teddy B. It's still it, This shit's still kind of up for anybody to get to, man. All right, look. What fighter did Crawford fill in for to face Prescott on three days' notice? So what fighter did he replace? Once again, what fighter did Crawford fill in for? to face Prescott on three days' notice. So what fighter canceled and he filled in for him? You know what I'm saying? 
Chris Rainer talking about Dak Prescott. I'm Ruiz said that beat me. Which one you oh you talking about El Fenichi talking shit? Once again, what fighter did Crawford fill in for to face Prescott on three days' notice? I see Felix Diaz, Robert uh Timms. Smooth Teddy B said, "Gam boy, now y'all gonna have to look a little deeper, goddamn. You gonna have to look into your soul a little deeper to get this one." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had like a goddamn uh, Lawrence Williams or somebody in mind when I had asked this question. What fighter did Crawford fill in for to face Prescott on three days' notice? All right, Chris Rayner got it. That'll be Khabib Alec Verdiev. So that's uh El Chapo. So that's five for El Chapo. That'll be fourteen. For team one, 14 to seven in favor of team one. Al Khabib Alec Verdia. Okay, he next Google, question. Man. He using Google. Yeah, all y'all can use Google, man. I ain't doing no trip. You know, we got to keep it moving. I ain't you that fast. I ain't fast like him. Yeah. Next question. Who did Crawford, uh, hold on. All right. Who did Crawford hand his first loss in an elimination bout en route to facing WBO champion Ricky Burns? That shit sounded kind of fucked up, but listen. Who did Crawford hand his first loss in an elimination bout en route to facing WBO champion Ricky Burns? Once again, once again, once again. Who did Crawford hand his first loss in an elimination bout en route to facing WBO champion Ricky Burns? I don't see it. I don't see it. I'm seeing y'all gamble. boy. Postal, I don't, I, it ain't uh postal. Okay, hey, uh, Chris Rainer, you already know we do the last names. We do last names on here. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and do it right. Okay, Fabio Montero, I got. I'm gonna put you on. You ain't on the team yet. I'm gonna put you on team one. I can't give you the answer. We changed that rule last time. This is this is the La La D rule. If you come in with the right answer. I can't give you the points. I got to put you on the team first. So that's the that's the Lala D rule. So who got it? Who got it out the hill? That'll be Bad Bart. God damn it. That's Klimov. Where Chris Rain at? He said Andre. Yeah, Bad Bart. You got to have a last name. God damn, we established the rules last time. So that's six points for Bad Bart. That'll be 15 points for team one, seven points for team two. Andre Klimov. Next question. Hey. Hey, let me ask you, can I cut in real quick? I be ducking yeah. these I be ducking these trivia, bro, so I don't know the rules. All right, all right. All right, next question. Who did Terrence Crawford fight in his first bout in Omaha, Nebraska? Once again, who did Terrence Crawford fight in his first bout in Omaha, Nebraska? His first professional bout. Boxing True Serum. What's up, man? I'm put you on team two. Put you on team too. I got you. Uh J1 Pro. Do I got you on the team? I don't think I got J1 Pro. I'm gonna put you on team one, bro. Just J1 Pro Da Vinci. All right. The answer is Yuri Orcus Gamboa. And I see that with smooth Teddy B. Where my man Teddy B at? That's four points for Teddy B. That's eight points for team two. So it's eight to fifteen in favor of team one. So that's Yuri Orcus Gamboa. Next question. What year did Crawford win Fighter of the Year as recognized by ESPN and Boxer Writers Association uh, of the Year after dethroning uh, Burns and becoming lineal lightweight champion? Hold on. I think I wrote that fucked up. Let me try. Hold on. Once again, what year did Crawford win Fighter of the Year as recognized by ESPN and the Boxing Writers Association after dethroning Burns and becoming lineal lightweight champion. So I'm looking for the year. Chris Rainer said, yeah, El Chapo can't be giving them all the answers, huh, man? Oh, shit, I done fucked up. My shit done. My shit wasn't moving. I'm tripping like a motherfucker. Okay, let me make sure. I think Bad Bart got it. I'm seeing 2014, that's Bad Bart. So Bad Bart got it. That's, uh... That'll be seven points for Bad Bart. So that's 16 points for team one. 16 to eight for team one. Let me make sure. Let me look one more time. Yeah, he, don't, he the first person I saw was 2014. Look, all right, that's Bad Bart. Okay, next question. 
Okay, what, next question. Who did Terrence Crawford fight in his debut fight at 140 pounds? Once again, who did Crawford fight in his debut fight at 140 pounds? Yeah, I fucked up. I had hit my screen and said, free your mind. What's up with it, man? I'm going to put you on team two. I ain't even see you, man. Boxing teams, okay, where y'all at? I'm seeing Horn, Beltran, no sirs, no sirs. This, no, nah, I, I can't give y'all this here. That's that's too, uh, okay, Chris Rainer, El Chapo. That's Thomas Delorme. So El Chapo got another one. That's six points for him. And that'll make 17 points for team one. So it's 17 to eight in favor of team one. That would be Thomas Delorme. Next question. What were the results of Amir Khan's 2004 Olympic run in Great Britain? Once again, what were the results of Amir Khan's 2004 Olympic run in Great Britain? Melo, uh, I'm going to put you on team one in case you want to play. Did we see Miller's apology? I saw that shit. He said he owned it up to it. He admitted to it, basically, you know what I'm saying? Okay, look like El Finici done fucked around and got one. That'll be a silver medal. El Finici yeah. got one. Silver yeah. medal, goddamn. Yeah. And I <laughs> guessed that shit. <laughs> that wasn't Google. That was guessing. Yeah, so that'll be 18 points for team one. So 18 to eight in favor of team one. That's one for El Finici. He, he won a silver medal. Let me let me look again and make sure he the, he the first one with it. Yeah, you got it. You got it, motherfucker. <laughs> now, why are you retarded? I'll be winning some shit. It got to be second check to second guess. Yeah, we got to the that next shit again, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, next question. What record did Amir Khan set with his 2004 Olympic silver medal? So basically, like, he broke a record. Well, he set a record. He set a record. Well, he did break a record. If you, if you set a record, you break a record, huh, man? So what, re what record did Amir Khan set with his 2004 Olympic silver medal. La La D, go L for Nietzsche, yeah. <laughs> Neutral Natural Games, PP said fast hand typing that nigga up there. Okay, uh, Neutral Natural say the youngest. I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. I'm going to get that to uh, Games, PP, Neutral Natural. That's three points for him. That'll make 19 points for team one. Let me make sure that's the first one. So that'll be, let me read it. The youngest in Britain's history to medal. At age 17. So he was the youngest fighter in Great Britain's history to medal at the Olympics. And he did it at 17 years old. And that's very impressive because, you know, at the Olympics, you know, you're 17, you fight grown ass men. You know what I'm saying? So my next question, what was Amir Khan's amateur record? You know, I got to go back to the amateurs and shit. Fabio, yep, he was 17. I see you down there. Once again, once again, what was Amir Khan's amateur record? And I got to tell y'all, I ain't, I ain't, uh, he said that was generous. Well, he said the youngest, man, so I know he, I know he thinking something like that. You know what I'm saying? That was kind of, uh, generous, but I'm going to go and let him make it with it. Fabio Montero got it, one on one and nine. Where I got it, man, man, Fabio Montero, that's one for him. So that'll make 20 points for team one. 20 to eight in favor of team one. Good job, Fabio Montero, one on one and nine. Next hey, Trey. Question. Go ahead. Trey. Hey, man, it's kind of hard for me to cheat, bro, because I can't use my, my, I can't use my voice thing with the Google Hangout, bro. Fuck up. <laughs> well, goddamn, work it out, man. You know what I'm saying? But next question. Who did Amir Khan fight in his American debut? Once again, who did Amir Khan fight in his American debut? Once again, for the hard of hearing. Who did Amir Khan fight in his American debut? Smooth Teddy B said Madonna Neutral Natural said Polly Malinaji. And that would be Polly Malinaji. So that's four points for Neutral Natural. That'll make 21 points for Team One. It's 21 to 8 in favor of Team One. So that's Polly Malinaji. Next question. What boxing honor did Amir Khan receive in 2007? I see y'all down there. Once again, what boxing honor did Amir Khan receive in 2007? 
Chris Ranger said, no, nah, he didn't say, oh, yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. You're right about that, bro. So I got to take that from my man, Neutral Natural. I forgot about that shit. Chris Rainer said, God damn, you got me for one, man. <laughs> yeah, I got to take that point from my man. Who got it next? Who got it next after Polly? I don't see where Malinaji. Polly M, do that count? Malinaji, Chris Rainer was the first one to come with the, nas- with the last name. So I got to get that to El Chapo. So that's seven points for him. They still make 21 points for team one. And what was the next question? Okay, fighter of the year, ring fighter of the year. All right, Smooth Teddy B, that'll be prospect of the year. So Smooth Teddy B, that'll be five points for him. That's nine points for team two. So it's nine to 21 in favor of team one. So that's prospect of the year. Next question. Who is the last man to knock out Zab Judah? Once again, who is the last man to knock out Zab Judah? Marlo say, damn, yeah, I got I to gotta, uh, keep it consistent. I, I be forgetting this shit. So I got it set in my mind. Y'all got to come with the last name. And the reason that we do that and shit, you know what I'm saying, because uh, I can't even remember what problem we had last time. I think people were using initials and shit, and some fighters had the same initials, like the Charlo brothers and shit like that. Okay, Amir Khan, El Fenichi got that one. <laughs> El Fenichi got two questions. So that'll be 22 points for team one. I told y'all. I told y'all wasn't ducking this trivia. I'm in this two to nine in favor of team one, you know what I'm saying? So that would be Amir Khan. Next question. What fighter only lost to Oscar De La Hoya, yeah, Fernel Vargas, Vernon Forrest, and Winky Wright, and was never knocked out in his career? Got to change it up on you a little bit. Yeah, I see y'all with y'all Amir Khans and shit. And the way that we do this, uh, the first place is going to come to the person that got the most points on the winning team. And second place is going to go to the person that got the most points on the losing team. The MVPs, goddamn. So once again, do I see it? I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. So look, what fighter only lost to Oscar De La Hoya, Fernando Vargas, Vernon Forrest, and Winky Wright, and was never knocked out in his career? Okay, now I seen the dream got it. That'll be Ike Corte. He gave me both names, goddamn. No, no uh, confusion. So we're not seeing the dream at He on team two. So that's two points for him. That'll make 10 points for team two. So it's 22 to 10 in favor of team one. So that's Ike Corte. Next question. What fighter goes by the alias El Shakal? The Jackal. Once again, what fighter goes by the alias El Shakal? The Jackal. That's an easy one right there. Once again, what fighter goes by the alias El Chacal? Fuck, Trey. That's, that's a race. That's it's a that race, piece. man. Y'all both know. All right, Neutral Natural got that one. Yeah, yeah, that's, he got the last name. I done got confused in my mind now. That would be Rick and Dow. So Neutral Natural, that's my man Games PP. I'm giving his point back, so that's four points for him. That will be 23. So it's 23 to 10 in favor of Team 1. Rigging down. Next question. Uh, Evander Holyfield is the only man to defeat what great 90s heavyweight? I see y'all down there. Guillermo Rigging down. Once again, what fighter? Go- Hold on, I'm tripping. Evander Holyfield is the only man to defeat what great 90s heavyweight? All right, El Fenici got another one. That'll be Riddick Bo. So that's three points for him. That'll be 24 for team one. It's 24 to 10 in favor of team one. I'm on my Trey X. I'm on my Trey X Jedi shit right now. (laughs) All right. Next question. Who was the first man to defeat Asalino Fritas? Will Stroker. What's up, man? Uh, What great fight would you like to call TKO tonight? Stop the fight. Team one, goddamn. Uh, Will Stroker, I'm going to put you on team two. I don't even know what you meant by your message. What great fight would you like to call tonight? Shit, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to call these fights tomorrow night, goddamn. Chris Rainer said, you cheating, L. Once again, who was the, who was the first man to defeat Asalino Fritas? I don't see it yet. And y'all know I ain't going to go get some unknown fighter from Antarctica that y'all ain't never heard of, you know what I'm saying? 
It's gonna be a well known fighter. All right, I see it. Fabio Montero got no hold on. Now I seen the dream gave me the nickname. God damn, you gotta give me the last name, bro. I hate to not even give you your point, man. Fabio Montero, I gotta give it to him. Diego Corrales. We gotta be strict on the last names, man. So Fabio Montero, that'll be Diego Corrales. Oh man, that feel funny. I give my man, I seen the point, man. 25 to 10 in favor of team one. That'll be two points for Fabio Montero. And this right here is the last question. What fighter went by El Faros or Ferocious? Once again, what fighter went by El Faros or Ferocious? I'm going to have to find a way to just post the rules and shit so everybody just know off the top. You know what I'm saying? Now, I seen the dream said, Trey, I'm high as shit. All right, I'm, that's, that's good. You ain't down there doing no tripping. You know what I'm saying? I done fucked you out your points. All right, that'll be Chris Rayner, El Chapo. That'll be Fernando Vargas. And that was the last question. I had one more question, but I wrote the goddamn shit wrong and fucked it up. That was question four. I said I was going to go back to it. And I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I ain't going to even ask the question. So let me count it up real quick. It looked like it looked like El Chapo won. El Chapo won first place on team one. And on team two, Smooth Teddy B won uh, second place. You know what I'm saying? So Chris Rayner, he won the 50. See, because El Finici got three. Chris Rayner got eight. Bad Bart got seven. Uh, 88 Sports Talk got one. Neutral Natural got three. Oh, uh, got four. Rod Sportsman Lee got one. Fabio Montero got two. So that's all on team one. Chris Rayner got the most on team one with eight points. And then on team two, uh, Nassim the Dream got two. Big Snack Pack got one. Smooth Teddy B got five. Uh, Marlo got one. Robert Trims got one. Uh yeah, so that's uh that's smooth Teddy B. So fifty bucks goes to um El Chapo, and uh twenty five goes to Teddy Crozevelt. You know what I'm saying, AKA Smooth Teddy B. So good job on that, y'all. You know what I'm saying. I'm on uh, IG and Ruiz said Michael Jackson. What are you talking about? <laughs> La La D said, Damn Marlo, you only got one. He was trying to let him make it. Man, Bar said this was fun. All right, man. Appreciate you coming through and uh participating and shit, man. You, you barely came up short, too, man. You was right there in the mix. I thought you were gonna win that motherfucker. But El Chapo got you on Google. I was trying to help our team too. You know what I mean? I can't do too much. Somebody gotta win. This shit, yeah. bro. Man, it's fucked up. Next time I ain't coming on the panel. I'm I'm gonna stand the motherfucker chat, work my Google shit. Well, get your ghost smelling ass in the chat next time. It's you know what I'm saying? Where you supposed to be on the trip. La La D said, and the new. Oh, yeah, that is. And the, the new. new. <laughs> <laughs> Undisputed <laughs> trivia champion of the world. <laughs> already, already. So, all right, we're going to, uh, y'all know I was going to try to keep this short. That's why y'all know normally I ask 100 questions. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't asked that many because I was trying to save my back a little bit. So we can call these fights tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? So we were going to do a couple of breakdowns and shit on the fighters that's fighting tomorrow because I know a couple of people like Sean, the Icon, and shit, they said we don't never do breakdowns no more. So I'm going to let y'all know we still break down fights, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to get into it a little bit, just real quick. So, like, all right, the we got four fights this weekend. We got Felix – well, this is on the – uh. The top rank card. I know we got the paper, the PBC card. I ain't even look at that. I don't even know why I did. Hey, Go, on the mute. New. Go on mute. <laughs> I said, and the new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, all right, we and got four new. fights this weekend. We got Felix Verdejo versus Brian Vasquez. And like I said, this is the card that we cover. We know we got the PBC card with uh Brandon, uh, what's that uh Danny Garcia and that other boy, uh Granados, you know what I'm saying? So and then the next fight, you got Shakur Stevenson versus Christopher Diaz, Tiafimo Lopez versus Adis Tatley, and uh Terrence Crawford versus uh Amir Khan, of course. You know what I'm saying? So the first fight, uh Felix Verdejo, he 24 and 0. I mean 24 and 1. I'm tripping. He got knocked out one time, one TKO. 24 and 1 with 16 knockouts. He only 25 years old. And and I like this. I like this Verdejo kid, y'all, because I think he was probably uh, Vasil Lomachenko's biggest win as an amateur. I mean, I probably can't say that, but I know he was one of his biggest wins as an amateur. And Lomachenko spoke very highly of him. You know, he's a very talented guy. So he's only 25 years old. He's staying five foot nine, 71 inch reach. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's real good for his weight class. He's an orthodox fighter. 
He had a uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Alias is El Diamante. I think that means diamond. His opponents that he has fought have been 359, 81, and 10 for an 80% win percentage. That's pretty good for a fighter with uh, 25 fights. In 2017, he fought one time. In 2018, he fought twice. And in 2019, he hasn't fought at all. You know what I'm saying? And in 2018, he had took that TKO loss to Enos Antonio Lozado Torres, who was 38 and 2 at the time. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh Felix Verdejo. He ain't been super active. You know, like I said, in 2017, one fight, 2018, two fights. This year, no fights. So he going up against Brian Vasquez, who is 37 and 3 with 20 knockouts. He's 31 years old, five foot five. With a 66 and a half inch reach. He orthodox from San Jose, Costa Rico. His alias is El Tequito. And his opponents that he has fought in his career have been 540, 280, and 41 for a 63% win percentage. So you look at his record and you see 37 and 3. That don't sound too bad. But his opponents got a 63% win percentage. He got some folks at 7 and 25 and all that shit on there. You know what I'm saying? So that's really not that impressive. Um in 2017, he fought once. In 2018, he fought twice. So far this year, he hasn't fought at all. You know what I'm saying? So he hasn't been uh, terribly active. This should be a nice little um, showcase type fight for Felix Verdejo, I think. You know what I'm saying? So let's see how he gonna, if he's going to overperform, if he's going to underperform. Let's see how he hold it down. You know what I'm saying? So the next fight, we got Shakir Stevenson going up against Christopher Diaz. And I think this is the, the biggest um, step-up fight of, of anybody like of the prospects and shit this weekend Shakur Stevenson 10 and 0 with six knockouts only 21 years old five foot eight with a 68 inch reach and that's good for a featherweight he a southpaw from Newark New Jersey his alias is fearless his opponents that he have fought so far in his career have been 112 19 and 7 for an 81 percent win percentage that's pretty good for a guy that got 10 fights that's really real good you know what I'm saying in 2018, he fought five times. So far in 2019, he's fought one time. So he's been he's been very active in his career so far. So like I said, he's going up against Christopher Diaz, who was tw who's 24 and one with 16 knockouts. 24 years old, so this ain't no old head. You know what I'm saying? Five foot six with a 64 inch reach. So Shakur got a two inch height advantage on him and a four inch reach advantage on him. He's an orthodox fighter from Bandar Quitas, Puerto Rico. Alias is uh Patufo. Uh, his opponents that he had fought in his career have been 236, 77, and 20 for a 71% win percentage. In 2017, he fought three times. In 2018, he fought three times. And he hasn't fought so far in 2019. So I think this is going to be a pretty good step-up fight for uh, Shakira. That's what I'm expecting. You got a fighter that's young. He only got one loss, and that was at 130. Now he's going back down to uh, 126, you know what I'm saying? And I think he got something to prove. So I think that's going to be um, a telling fight. So hopefully Shakira come out shining like new money, you know what I'm saying? DB and OG, what's up, man? What's going down with you? So the next fight is going to be Teofimo Lopez. He is 12-0 and 0 with 10 knockouts. He is 21 years old, stands 5'8 with a 68 and a half inch reach. He's from Brooklyn, New York. His alias is L. Brooklyn. His, rec his opponent's re uh, combined record have been 176, 56, and 7 for a 74% win percentage. That's pretty good for a guy with 12 fights. In 2018, he fought four times. In 2019, he fought once. So he's been active. He going up against Edis Tatley. Now, his opponent, this opponent right here, is 31 and 2 with only 10 knockouts. So he looking kind of like a safe opponent, you know what I'm saying? Only got 10 knockouts out of 33 fights. Shit, that's only like a 30% uh knockout percentage. He is 31 years old, so he ain't incredibly old. Five foot nine from prison in Kosovo. His alias is Prince. And his opponents that he have fought in his career have been 439, 182, and 36 for a 67 percent win percentage that's not very good especially you got over 30 fights in 2017 he fought twice in 2018 he fought once and so far in 2019 he ain't fought at all you know what i'm saying so um this on paper it looked like this was going to be a step up for teofimo lopez but looking at how this guy don't have no power 
and and, and his opponents only got a 67% win percentage, this looking like it ain't much of a step up at all. So this should be another showcase fight, high top rank do for Teofimo Lopez. So the, the uh, fourth and the final fight is Terrence Crawford versus Amir Khan. Terrence Crawford was, is 34-0 with 25 knockouts. He's 31 years old. He stands 5'8 with a 74-inch reach from Omaha, Nebraska. His alias is Bud, of course. His, his opponents have been 5'59, 205, and 14 for a 72% win percentage. That's actually not the greatest for a motherfucker that got 34 fights, you know what I'm saying? But we all know he got skills to pay the bills, and a lot of those losses are bottom heavy on his uh. On, you know, on his uh, resume, like like some of his earliest fights, they had like a lot of losses. You know what I'm saying? In 2000, but he didn't tighten up along the way though. Like as far as the competition, in 2017 he fought twice. In 2018 he fought twice. And um, I don't think he fought so far this year yet. If I ain't mistaken, I don't remember seeing it on Box Rec. Amir Khan, uh, he going up against Amir Khan. Amir Khan is 33 and four with 20 knockouts. He's 32 years old. That's two years younger than I thought he was. I thought he was 34. But he's five foot eight and a half with a 71 inch reach from uh, Bolton, Lancashire, UK. His alias is King Khan, and his opponents in his career have been a whopping 903, 172, and 25 for an 82% win percentage. That's really, really good. That's like upper echelon type of resume. And y'all all, y'all know what type of fighters he done fought in his career. In 2017, he didn't fight at all. In 2018, he fought twice. In 2019, he hasn't fought yet. So he hasn't been super active in the last few in the last couple of years. You know what I'm saying? So let's see how he's gonna handle that shit. But that's the fighters that we um checking out this weekend. That was just a little look ahead um to the fights this weekend. I mean tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? So y'all make sure that y'all come through and fuck with us tomorrow. Y'all say what y'all say, bud all night is the pick there. That's what I'm taking too. I'm gonna read the chat a little bit, man, before we uh go ahead and bounce. I'm gonna let my back uh rest up and shit so I can be 100 percent tomorrow. All right, free your mind. Okay, let me scroll down. Stevenson got a hard one. Yeah, that's what I think so too, man. I think it's gonna be a, a nice little step up fight. Okay, D B O G said he on that 1800. Now I seen the dream say, yes, sir. Lopez is his pick. Who you taking? What you mean, Lopez? Oh, Tiafimo Lopez. Yeah, that's one of my favorite prospects. Right behind little B Hop. I got I got little B Hop, Tiafimo Lopez, then I got Shakir Stevenson for my favorite prospects. Uh La La D Lab. And I seen the dream said no crow for me. Yeah, I ain't trying to eat no crow either. You see, I ain't been in that cafe in a long time. D V O G, yeah, Lopez. Free your mind. Okay, you talking about that liquor. La La D said a joke. But we all know Lopez really wants the tough competition. Yeah, he do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but he still got to learn and grow along the way and shit. So this this ain't a bad fight. You know what I'm saying? People were just looking at it like it was a major step up. I don't really see it like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I like him as a prospect, though. Uh, not seeing the dream. said, Bud all night is the pick. I agree. La La Lee said, go Bud. Yeah, for sure. Will Stroker said, uh, AK uh, Amir King Kong. Uh, champion a long time didn't have to take this fight. Yeah, DB and OG said I got Bud. She be should be good at the start. Then Bud gonna bulldog his ass. <laughs> yeah, he just got he really got to just worry about them piston like punches that come from Amir Khan and worry about his movement. So if he able to cut the ring off and he able to find the timing uh for those straight punches that Khan throws, cause he don't really throw a lot of hooks. He throw straight punches and uppercuts you know what i'm saying so once bud is able to calibrate that i think he should be able to get him get him out of there and i seen the dream said bud by dog walking seven i don't think he's gonna necessarily dog walk him but i do think he can stop him though i'm gonna give him 10 i, I give con 10 good rounds and uh like he said salute fam like yeah con did his thing yeah he didn't have a tough career 88 sports star said canelo that's why what you talking about, bro? I done got lost. Free your mind said, Bud good at catching a chin. Khan is known for getting his chin caught, goddamn. So he's taking a, a Bud by knockout. Bad Bar said, I'll try to make it tomorrow, Trey, as long as I don't fall asleep first. All right, man. I appreciate you coming through this motherfucker. Linda, that'll be knows what's up with it, man. What's going down? Salute. La La D said, and Jerron, Trey X, what is Jerron in this fighting on? He fighting on PBC? I ain't even know. I didn't even check the PBC card to see who was fighting on it. Bad, bad bar says Shakur is the best prospect in his opinion. I ain't mad at Shakur. I got a number three. You know what I'm saying? My thing about Shakur is that he fight the same type of competition all the time. He fight all uh, Latino fighters. 
I want to see them fight different types of fighters. And like when I look at the competition so far, it ain't even close. Little B Hop done fought the best competition for me anyway. Lopez done been up there too, though. I probably, I'm, it's, I probably have to give it to Lopez actually. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it to Lopez, and I got a little B Hop number two. But little B Hop is the only prospect that got a knockout over three undefeated prospects. You know what I'm saying? But overall, I think Lopez has a slightly better resume. Um. Uh, uh, Linda Delaby's nose said, "What's up, Marlo Trez? I smell a great weekend of fights. Yeah, it's going down." La La D said, "Trez, you didn't mention Granados versus Danny. Yeah, I was, I was really just thinking about the card that we call him, but you're right about that. I'm gonna have to be, I'm gonna be on my game next time." Uh, Will Stroke said, "Devin Spark, uh, Spard, AK, uh, Amir Khan. What are you saying, Devin Alexander sparring him or something? I don't know what you mean." My Wonderlick said Ennis has promotional problems. Okay, I ain't even know nothing about that. Now, I seen the dream said the bud don't dog walk Khan in seven. It don't count. Yeah, I mean, it count, man. I mean, Khan is a is a long time uh pro. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker only 32, so he ain't shot yet. I mean, shit, that's the same age as Mikey Garcia. He won a go a silver medal in the Olympics and shit. You know what I'm saying? He's a quality fighter, bro. He had over a hundred amateur fights, one on one and nine. I know he done got knocked out in his career, but most of the time he done got hurt with fighters that can hit, that can punch. Uh, motherfuckers like Bradish Prescott, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, who the other motherfucker that knocked him out? Uh, Danny Garcia. Like, them motherfuckers can punch, you know what I'm saying? Especially if they uh, respect the weight classes. So I think I think uh, if, if, if Crawford go in there and stop him, that'll be a solid win no matter what round he do it in. Just my opinion. La La D said, no, I was saying you missed him as a great prospect. Oh, okay. Yeah, he a great prospect, but I, I still don't have him on the same level as some other guys that I mentioned. I don't see Jerron Ennis the way I see Little B-Hop or uh, Shakur or uh, Teofimo Lopez. I think he is a great athletic fighter, but I don't see the same type of skill set that he has with the other guys. I see him ha- as being the, uh, the type of guy – that, that has the, the potential to be very athletic but have a low punch volume. So far, we've seen him in there with guys that he able to get off against. But let's see what's going to happen when, you know what I'm saying, when motherfuckers start fighting back and he and he have to start figuring shit out. You know what I'm saying? Because this last fight, that was that was super easy. We were struggling. said, what time you start talking? I don't even know what he mean again. Goddamn, that's a new uh, Marshall uh, Simmons, goddamn. No, I don't know about, nothing this man talking, talking about. about. He talking about the fight. What time we going to fire it up? Oh shit! I think it start like eight o'clock tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like eight o'clock central. You already know how they do on the pay per view. La La Lee says Shakira getting so much better. Yeah, that motherfucker. Um, he a hell of a fighter, man. This dude, uh, Matthew Faust, he did some breakdowns on him. He showed some of the, you know, the intricate little details that that Shakira uses in the ring and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shakira's a bad motherfucker. Like I said, I got him number three. You know what I'm saying? Behind little B Hop and uh Tiafimo Lopez. Uh, ADA Sports Talk said, con inactivity, laughing out loud. Canelo, the reason, goddamn, he even got put in a coma. He just woke up out the coma, huh, man? <laughs> hey, yeah, you're right about that. That's a good point. Smooth Teddy B said, I got Ergovich, Shakur Ennis, my favorites. I forgot about Ergovich, man. I only seen one of his fights, uh, the one that got on YouTube. The motherfucker can fight, man. He a big guy, can move around real good. Uh, got fluent hands and shit, you know what I'm saying? He might be next up at heavyweight, man. I, I, I'm starting to believe in him. I done heard y'all talking about him for a long time. DBOG said Gabriel Flores Jr. is my best kept secret. Yeah, that motherfucker got like a knockout in each one of his fights. I like them. I think I think he do. That motherfucker go to the body with that left hook and shit. I do like, uh, hold on, I think I'm getting mixed up with the other guy. Gabriel Flores is the one that's kind of slick. Yeah, you talking about the one that's slick. What's the other Mexican that fight for Golden Boy that's undefeated? I can't um, even remember his fucking name. There you go, Virgil Ortiz. That's what I thought he was talking about. Yeah, I like Virgil Ortiz. I like how he go to the body with that left hook and shit. But yeah, Gabriel Flores Jr., he a good prospect. We call one of his fights and shit. He real slick. Come over the top of the jab with the right hand and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I seen the dream said, it's fight week. We need to get an all-time high for likes get started smashing. Now, yeah, it's going down, man. Goddamn, I hope we can get like 200 likes for the first time. We ain't never done that before. La La D laughing. La La D said, there is never a new Marshall Simmons, goddamn. I'm just saying, I don't even know what my man talking about. Will Stroker said, uh, Amir Khan uh, opposed 900 plus wins. Oh, his opponents, yeah, 900 plus wins. What you mean? Then he got the shit sign. So he said, I don't even know what he mean again. 
So what are you talking about? His nine hundred plus wins or shit like some bullshit fighters? Is that what he's saying? La La D said Canelo made Khan drop like he was in theater class. That's how <laughs> his drop looked. <laughs> Yeah, that was raggedy, man. It looked like he knocked all kind of mucus out of his nose and, and all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm but Con, to... but Can- Canelo can hit, and that fight was at 155. You better say something, bro. I was trying to think of what uh, Will Sturger was talking about. I think he was referring to something we were talking about earlier, but we didn't jump to so many conversations. Okay, okay. Robert Tim said, who's faster, Con or Crawford? See, just off the top, man, I got to say Con faster. And plus, he put he throw combinations, he throw punches and bunches. But we all know what defeats speed, and that's timing. So I gotta know that uh, Bud got the better timing, he got the better accuracy, he got the better uh punch placement. You know what I'm saying? Like he can he can throw he can throw himself open. Like he can throw punches to make you open up. Like I saw a lot of that in the uh in the Benavidez fight. You know what I'm saying? So we already know, like uh, uh, Roger Mayweather used to say, power don't win fights, speed don't win fights, skills win fights. So, you know, the uh, the big advantage got to go to Crawford. ADA Sports Talk says Terrence Bud Crawford would be the reason he would take another vacation, and then he would fight Brooke and get destroyed and ride off into the sunset <laughs> on the board and smoke some Sunset Sherbet on the way out there, <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at him, man. It's going down. But yeah, man, we're going ahead and going to shut it down, man. We're going to got that taken care of. So congratulations to my man El Chapo. Congratulations to Smooth Teddy B. You know what I'm saying? We take care of y'all. We'll read the last little ones, then we can go on burn off on this motherfucker. So we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, not seen the dream. Said Bud has the better chance of whipping Khan's ass. I agree. Rod Sports Malik said Bud has better ring IQ. I think so. Uh, La La D said Wilder destroyed that theory. Which theory is she talking about? Y'all know, man, I'm on the dash right now, man. Hey, this is 420 weekend. Y'all better know it. Goddamn, I'm on with some uh, platinum bubble mixed with some, uh, what kind of shit? I got some alien OG. I got the shit mixed together. And it's a good grow, goddamn. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm gassed out in this motherfucker. What you got over there, bro? I got some Skywalker. I said, what? Oh that nigga always got some exotic shit. Right, that's the champ. So, damn, people, what a lot. I missed the trivia. Yeah, you missed the trivia, man. El yeah, Chapo got it. What'd you say, bro? I said, they both OG. You know, I love that OG strand, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La La D said, damn, Trash, you forget fast. Why to destroy Roger Mayweather's theory? That's, hold on. That skills skills don't win fights. Oh, you talking about speed and power don't win fights. Skills win fights. Well, you actually taking credit away from Wilder on that, though. He got underrated skills. You know what I'm saying? He done learned on the job. And, like, when I went back and looked at their uh, fight against Fury again, I liked the shit he was doing. He had jab Fury. I liked the stop jab that he was using on Fury. The looping right hand to the body, he was finding a home for it. And, of course, he finally found the mark with that right hand and brought back the left hook. So, no, nah, I ain't going to take that from Wilder. Wilder didn't uh, destroy his theory. Even if you got speed and you got power, you still need some skill to go with that shit. Bad Bar said, uh, let me get some. Trey, what you talking about? Oh, you talking about this gas I'm smoking on me? You don't know nothing about that, boy. They should have had you in Debo Pigeon Coop, boy. <laughs> ADA Sports Talk said, I don't get it. Bad boy said, need some of that blue dream. That's what El Chapo got. And hey, we had a digital smoke session last night. It was me, Marlo, El Chapo. Uh, who else was it? Was it just uh, of us? Main. Oh, yeah, Main Boston Biker, but he couldn't get his shit to work, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were lit last night, man. They met me on Mars. Then we turned around and we went to the Orion Constellation. Like my man CSM HBJ, I'll be saying, they said, meet me on Sirius B, goddamn. I said, hey, I'll meet y'all over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> El Chapo said he was gone. Yeah, that boy was gone, man. <laughs> Bad Bart said, I'm about to get some weed butter made with the blue dream. What you know about that shit, uh, Bad Bart? You on the edibles? <laughs> God- El Chapo said, first time in 10 years. Yeah, yeah, that motherfucker was gone. I seen the dream said trades. They think Wilder don't have skill. Ask them boys that hit the camp. <laughs> hey, you know what? And I forgot about the fight that he had against the Vern in the first fight. That was a masterpiece to me, man. He uh he maintained the range. He put the jab on him, straight right hand on his motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? He tied him up when he got in close. I mean, he fought a great fight against the Vern in that first fight. You know what I'm saying? He boxed well, showed great skills, you know. Uh Mar Wanley said he got some gelato blue. Goddamn, what's that? What's that shit mixed with? Gelato and what? The blue dream? Mm-hmm. Bad Bar said about to go to some different galaxy myself. Goddamn. <laughs> hey, meet me on Andromeda, Bad Bar. I'm going to be over there in a minute, man. We're going to the galaxy Andromeda. 
<laughs> uh, DB and OG said, you right. You need skills and heart. Yeah, skills, heart, speed, power, all that shit go. Timing, you know what I'm saying? Dog, all that shit. Yeah, need all that. Uh, Real Stroker said, Deontay Wilder, fast and heavyweight. Bomb squad, goddamn. Yeah, square business. La La D said, Tracks put words in my mouth. I don't know. All right, see, be clear on what you're saying, uh, Miss Lady. Because you said that uh, uh, Wilder blew uh, holes in Roger Mayweather's theory. Roger Mayweather says speed don't win fights. Power don't win fights. Skills win fights. So I'm thinking that you're saying that he destroyed that theory. And I'm saying he. I don't think he did. I think that Wilder got underrated skills. So if you say that he destroyed the theory, to me, you're saying that you don't need skills to win. All you need is speed and power, which uh, Wilder possesses. And that's why he smashed uh, the theory. That's what I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? Bad boy laughing a lot. He said, you never heard me say Wilder didn't have skills. Well, how can you how can you uh smash the theory without um lack of skills? You know what I'm saying? Because Roger Mayweather said you need skills to win fights. So how can you smash that theory without a lack of skills? You see what I'm saying? You don't confuse me, lady goddamn me. Hey, this is 420 weekend. Don't get me arguing. Let me just rest in my zen right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me just chill in my feng sway. Because I'm about to go and roll up something and get right. Right now. So let me go ahead and have my peace. La La Disa, I was saying that Wilder's power is the biggest asset. You know, well, yeah, I guess when you compare his power to his skill set, the power would stand out over, over the other shit. But if you ain't got the skill set, it's kind of hard to deliver the power. You know what I'm saying? So, so even if you got power, it still takes skills to get it there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, we, we'll be doing this shit all night, La La D. You got it. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Goddamn, La La D won that little old debate between the two of us. Boy, one of the little bomb squad nation. Kidding, sis. Look at little, look at the chop for <laughs> Hey, nigga, we gonna cut that fifty down to twenty on your motherfucking head, nigga. Since you wanna, since you wanna be down there talking all that shit, you know what I'm saying? All right, La La D gave me an LOL, so she ain't doing no tripping. Yeah, I ain't trying to uh, start no argument or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Chris Rainey, Yeah, never mind. Get her. Tell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's Man, Bart said he gone. All right, man, we gone too, man. Goddamn, y'all got me up uh, bullshitting, talking to y'all and shit. All right, man, appreciate everybody that came through this motherfucker, man. We're going to have some fun tomorrow. If you ain't hit the like button, we'd appreciate it if y'all did that. I know y'all all fam, only 13 people up in here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all come through and fuck with us tomorrow for the fight. We're going to have some fun. Y'all already know, man. Until tomorrow. Man, uh, Chris, man, you want to say something? L? Oh, yeah, real quick. Hey, uh, first off, I want to thank God. I want to thank uh, <laughs> my wife, my kids, my mom, my mama, uh, and then last but not least, man, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta thank Google for their hard work tonight, <laughs> man. But peace out, man. Y'all did a great job, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, I gotta give you a good vamos campeón, huh, man? Yes, sir. Girl, man, that's a champ. <laughs> And the new. Oh. What you want to say, Elfin? you want to thank your mama for your two questions you got right? <laughs> no, man. Oh, it was three, huh? No, mama gone, bro. Uh, so I can't thank her. But uh, big shout out to El Chapo, bro. He uh, came through and won his first. Uh, he and the new. So anybody with it. <laughs> anybody with L in the front of their name, I gotta, you know, I gotta be all the way in on them. I don't always get questions wrong on the trivia, but when I do. It's always on this motherfucking corner. <laughs> Gia. Man, hey, it's always fun. Always finding and always enjoying time with the fam on this boxing note and everything else, man. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all have a good night. Until the next one, don't forget to tell them haters and trolls. The fuck out my gym. You heard him. Peace.